In the last video, we uh, managed to get the computer, the robot there, to, to do things by sending commands through a website, which would then, uh, that thing would read from. Um, but I said that it could also connect to multiple robots. So, um, so I'm going to start on a second robot. So that one, I'm not going to touch. I'm, just, I'm, I'm starting, the, you can hear in the background, uh, printing away. I've started printing a new, um, a new robot. Uh, but because it's modular, it, it means that the piece, the piece that's, that's printing right now is pretty much exactly the same as what's on that, but I'm going to start printing, uh, designing a new one, uh, based on this. This is a GT2 cable, um, a GT2 timing belt, which is used in uh, 3D printers. Um, so, see that the little ridge is on that. Reminds me very much of these. Um, tank tracks and the thing is these I can get very very easily I've got like I've already got mountains of it right here um, for 3d printing projects so I'm gonna design uh, this into track um, into uh, tank, tra tank treads uh, for the next version of the robot and I think it might actually work out better than this so um, let's get on with that this is the it's the battery base from the previous robot, except I stuck a lot of holes in the side um, to just uh, make it lighter and uh, make it quicker to print. Um, also, it looks nice. So in the um, in the new version, we will not be using the Janssen's linkage. Instead, this layer, uh, these two layers, so this layer with the legs and this layer with the uh, the cogs. We're going to rebuild those two. Everything else is fine. So we're just going to rebuild these two. So I can just hide them for now. Yeah. So that looks nice. That's very good. All right, that stays where it is. Uh, now I remember I had to saw off the edge here, uh, just along the edges here, because the legs were bumping up into it. So I'm just going to um, shorten that top. All right. Now, so. You can see the motor pokes its axis out here. And that's what we're gonna stick the, um, we're gonna use that to connect to the uh, the tracks. So I have an idea of what I want to do exactly. And I'm gonna start off with a blank rectangle. 30, perfect. Okay, so what we also need is, uh, we need a hole for the screw the bolt which goes in there Boom. okay right then we can unhide that and that's in a very nice place okay and then we also need one on the other side and it looks good okay right so these two are holes that go into the queue uh to screw it in place so we screw it in place and then this is going to be the um the drive cog Drive gear, drive cog, drive gear. So we'll need a, a cylinder for that as well. That's good. Now, we need a gear, and the gear has to be uh, not like what we've done for the last one, which was we had a kind of beveled triangles, not beveled, what would you call them? I don't know what you call them. Triangles like that, that kind of kept them centered. Instead, we need in fact, this is absolutely perfect. This is a NEMA 17 motor, and it is actually what is used in a 3D printer. So if we look closely at the teeth in that, you'll see they're absolutely straight, and they fit the belt. In this particular case, they don't fit it very well, so I'm not going to use this as a guide. like it's what I want. Uh, so let's render that as an STL and save it. We'll go back to FreeCAD now. Sure, save it, why not? Whatever. Don't need that anymore. Okay, imports. Ah, uh, that's pretty big, so let's, let's use less heat. What I'm planning is, uh, in order to make the, uh, the gear grip, uh, it should 
curve around the toothed gear. But uh, if it's a very small curve, well then that adds strain, makes the belt last not quite as long. Right, let's try that again, but with less teeth. Let's say 10. And maybe that detail thing is, is important, so I'll just reduce that to 10 and see what it does. I don't know what it does. Well, 10 is a bit small. But at least it was quick. So I'll print this version out. I'll, I'll just take this version here. Let's get really closer to see what I can see. That's anything. Just so much detail. Let's put a hole in it that we can stick the axes into. That, that looks good, looks centered. Uh, I think I might need a bigger pulley because the uh, the size of the hole in this is about the size of this. Maybe you can get away with it. Maybe. Height of just over five, let's say six. Right, I move that up one. So that's, um, it's a bit close to the edge there. I need, need a bigger pulley, so I'm glad I kept open scout. Open. We'll just increase the teeth size to, let's say, 30. And I'm gonna bring this right down. I don't know what this 10, 1, 100 means. Let's bring that right down to 1. Never know. Try it. Right, I see what it means, yeah. It, just, it doesn't really matter, it's just tiny detail. Right. This is 6 from this side to this, so we can make a radius of 3, no we can't, 2.99. Because of how FreeCAD works. But that's probably too much, is it? Don't like it. Uh, I'll bring that just to point. Yes, okay. Yeah, I'll we'll just leave it at that. Now I can delete this fillet from the pulley. Just like that. <gasps> oh dear, that's not right. Right, um, let's just edit that. Uh, what's it called? Gear. There. So, uh, let's see. How does this work again? Do a difference. Well, first off, I'm going to make a rectangle. How do you do a cube in this? Is it? There it is. That's exactly what I want. Now, we can just delete one from the other. So, uh, difference. I'll put this after the gear. So, we'll do difference. There. Right, um, render that. Yes, that was quick, thanks. Alright, unhide that cube. Alright, ah, this is gonna be good. Right, so we'll make some big wheels, so I can just print out a load of the same size, and unfortunately I threw out those old ones. Uh, but let's just make some new ones. That's really cool. Okay. So we'll give that a radius, we'll give the height first of one. Radius of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, a radius of big. Um, there. And then we'll just copy this other one and just Yeah. Move. And this piece here is going to have a height of four. And then position it, and we'll just, uh, let's say, move this one over here just so I can see this side as well. A little bit of space there, and we got the edge again. Uh, 
3.99 meters. Hmm. It's the same as that. Do I want that? 15. Right. And add another 15. Brings it to 34. And I think you can see where I'm going now with this. We'll join these two together. And then subtract this middle one. And you can see that that's an idler. It's an idler wheel. So um, the it's just like the rest. The rest are really idlers as well, I suppose, in a way. But uh, the belt comes along here and just goes over here. And the belt tension itself will keep this in place. Goes over here, then there's another another idler here, and then around here again. It's all gonna be good. That's pretty quick. I have to now make it, but uh, that's a small part of this. If I want to make it stronger, what I could do is um, I could build a small plate that goes over this whole thing and then close it all in. So I'm just going to check and see how strong this is first. I'll print it out and see how strong it is first. And if I find that it's actually pretty weak, uh, then I'll build another plate over this that just uh, acts as a second side to these. But I, I, like the, I like the look of it now. I like the look of it. Right. Um, Let's do that. So, Sunday morning, and uh, some of the prints are finished. So I've got the battery box. Let me just look at the old robot. This is the old robot. The, the 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 robot that already works. Let's not call it old yet. So we've got the battery box here. Now I've put a lot of holes in it to make it lighter and uh, quicker to print. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. So um. Just to talk about the holes there, see the, uh, I've used triangles here instead of circles. Uh, and the tri uh, sorry, these are squares, they are squares. Squares, uh, 45 degree uh, turn on their axis. The reason we do the, the 45 degree turn is that if I didn't do that, then you'd have bridges straight across uh, a hole. And that doesn't print very well. So we, we turn at 45 degrees. Now the reason we didn't use uh, circles is that, um, well, here's a switch. Uh, there's a hole for the switch at the back. Um, where's my camera? There it is there. If you look very, very closely, if the camera will focus, then you'll see there's a little bit of a droop at the top because at the top, we're almost printing straight across and we're basically pouring molten plastic across nothing, which starts to droop down. So if we use um, 45 degree, uh, uh, 45 degree diagonals, well then it doesn't droop as badly. Uh, you can do, um, there's a little trick that I've seen uh, some other guys do, uh, Maker's Muse for example, where he will take a circular hole and then stick a 45 degree uh, triangle at the top. And that's the same trick but it's, it's more effort so I didn't bother. Um, okay, uh, also on the side here uh, you can see I've got these are uh, bolt connectors, so the bolts will come in, come in here and connect onto them. Now the reason that I put this hole here is because if you don't do that and the bolts are too tight, well then the bolt connectors will explode. Um, so you need to have some way of allowing, allowing stress to just expand that out a bit, so it will grip, grip on but it won't actually break. Um, yeah. And what else have I done? That's enough for that one, I suppose. Right, um, I've also printed the wheels, and you can see what I mean, like when I, I printed them in two parts, so that I can put them together like that. And here's a bit of the GT2. You can see how well that fits around it. Okay. Right, and I've taken the the wall of the track thing, that's took a lot of holes in that as well, because why not, while I'm at it. But this means that I can now take these wheels and I can uh, start to actually uh, put everything into place and design the, um, let's see, I'll just get one here. Let's see, screw that in place there. And this one in place here. And finally, this one here. Right, so we can see the shape that the uh, the track is going to follow. Sort of like that. Okay, 
and there will be a dip down there where the the gear, the driving gear goes. Now I've I've cut the driving gear wrong. The hole in the middle is way too big, so I went back to open the scad and redesigned that. Um, and I'll have to print that one out again. And it looks just looking at this, I think I got the. I think I might have got them too close. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. You go okay. Right, but you can see um, this by dipping this down between these two idlers. I force as many teeth as possible to go around this drive gear, meaning that if this turns, well then it is almost guaranteed to never slip. So it will give as much pressure as poss possible against the um, against the, the track and turn them around. So the next stage is I need to reprint this, uh, put the idlers on, and then I can measure the track and see how much does it have to be, uh, how long does it have to be before I join it. Now I've never joined the GT2 track before. So I've been looking up how to do it, and um, it's kind of complex, like everything I see in forums basically says, look, uh, don't do it yourself, go pay for somebody else, go buy it like that, buy a loot GT2 in the right size. Uh, but I don't like that, so I'm going to do it myself anyway. We'll get to that. Alright, so I'm going to reprint this, and um, reprint the, uh, what do you call that, a drive gear, drive, drive, drive cog. Um, yeah, and once that's done, I'll be able to see where everything goes. All right. Okay, so after putting this together um, a little bit further, I can tell there's a few more problems. Okay, first, I've already mentioned this, that the, the motor uh, axle, I got that well off. The size is completely wrong. Uh, second problem, it's not really a problem, but uh, I've underestimated how much clearance I can get away with on the idlers, so these are very, very loose. Uh, I think I gave it a 1mm clearance in total, so I could have got away with a bit smaller. And uh, the third one is that I can't, if I tighten this nut, well then the wheels don't move. So what I need to do is put a small kind of spacer in the inside and have the, the wheels turning on the spacer. That will also solve another problem, which is that over time, if this, if these wheels are turning and turning and turning directly on a bolt, well then the treads of the bolt are going to shred the inside of the wheels. So it'll solve that as well. So before I get to print this side, the other side, I'm going to redesign those little elements and uh, hopefully the next print will be a lot better. So, um, I've just printed out the new pulley, which is the right size for the motor. So that fits. Uh, there's a very small bit of play, but it's it's not enough to cause any uh, any issues. So what I'm going to do now is um, just clean it up first, and then I'm going to measure the track and see how much track do I actually need in the loop, and uh, and see if I can see if I can do the loop. Okay, that's about it. Okay, so based on that. Based on that, I still don't know what I'm doing. Okay, it's gonna be fun. Right, so what I'm gonna do here is I have this loop and I'm just going to take a small clamp and uh, clamp this closed. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is cut a diagonal line um, from one side to the other and then glue the, the two sides together. How do you glue this together? Now I could use super glue, but I don't know how strong that's going to be. What some people are saying is that you put some tape on the back, nylon tape, and super glue that onto the back. And then, if I do that, ah, do you know what? If I do that, then I could bend this over, run a soldering iron along that, and hopefully melt the rubber, and then just bend that into place and have the rubber just kind of melt together. I'm going to try that. Yeah, because so I really know what I'm doing. Okay, so I need uh, some plastic strip. Let's see. What will I use? A little bit of plastic bag. That'll do. It's not too true. Okay, put some glue on this side. Whoa, that's a bit much. So 
so I'll just uh, in the size of them. Okay, there really is a bit too much there, so I'll just wipe some of it off there. And there we go. It's almost like I intended it. Now, I'll just put these next to each other so that the teeth kind of line up. In fact, I'm going to do the other way around. I'll put the uh, plastic on here. Totally isn't working. And then I'll put this down here so I can see the teeth. Looks good. And maybe we'll just do the middle part. It's not even melting, is it? So I can smell it. No, that's not going to work. Okay, let's just pour some super glue in there then. And just see what happens. Super glue down the line to this. And then bond them together. Now I'm going to put this on top, but I'm going to take it off every few seconds just so that it doesn't stick to it. I'm putting that on top just to make sure that the teeth are aligned as, this, as the thing sticks together. All right, you never know; it might actually just work. So I'll just I'll leave this for a while, let it dry, and see what happens. But it's uh, it's looking good. Right, let's measure that. And that actually works. Okay, it's surprising what a difference. It's just two millimeters. What a difference that makes. Yeah, that's tight. It's not bending or flexing too much. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, I'm happy ish. I love watching this uh, printer printing away. I could sit and watch it for hours. And in fact, I do sit and watch it for hours. Um, if you look at, see the holes, uh, see that teardrop shaped hole there. There's a reason for the teardrop. If you look in the foreground, we have another hole, which is supposed to be circular. And if I just angle this so that you can see top there, it's very hard to see. There we go. That's not very circular. Uh, the top kind of droops down because that is literally molten plastic that's coming out. So to solve that, we use a teardrop shape. Now I don't really care too much about the, the problem in the foreground there, but uh, in, in the background I want... Um, I'm, I'm just trying in the future to use teardrop shape uh, to solve that little issue there. Now, there's another problem which is to do with um, scaffolding. Um, you can see in the corner there I have a little scaffold. Uh, that's that's because about two centimeters up, it hasn't started yet, there's something which kind of prints in mid-air and that's to help that. But scaffolding causes problems as well because sometimes the scaffolds will fall over. You can see in the background I've got two. The one on the left, uh, anytime this thing tries to print it, it's actually kind of knocking it over. It's because the scaffold's so thin. So for any future prints, I'm going to try and redesign them so that they don't need any scaffolds or uh, supports. Nice.
I love this stuff. It's currently printing at 3.2, um, sorry, 0.32 millimeters per layer. That's a very large number because the the diameter of the hole in the uh, the in, in the in the print head is actually 0.4, so it's it's pretty close to its limit, 0.32. I'm also printing with 0% infill, so if we look at the wall that it's printing, for example, there's actually a very small gap. There you go. There's a little small gap right in the middle. Uh, which is strengthened by these little triangles that I'm printing in the walls. But I'm print I'm doing that because it actually speeds up the print. Uh, this does not need to be a perfect print. It just needs to work. So I took that print off and um, after it finished and had to make some changes based on what I learned from it. So here's what it looks like. That's supposed to be a teardrop. This is supposed to be kind of a vertical um, bridge almost and you can see on the other side I mentioned that uh, this was a bit flimsy that it looked like yes it does uh, so that's that's one of the reasons I don't like using supports but this is one of the reasons why we need supports um, so based on this I redesigned a few things uh, for this I put in a few little vertical walls and it came out like this which at first glance looks a lot better but is actually a lot more flimsy. Um, it, it ends for some reason. There's a lot. Um, it's very hard to see there. There, there's, there's under extrusion going on here, which means that the less plastic is coming out there should be. Uh, but that's that's a pretty good solution for this. So you can just clip them out as you need to. Um, these bits here, that's weak. That's weak. I don't know if it's going to survive having screws put into it, but we'll see. It's very hard getting this right. Okay, I'm printing another piece at the moment. And then we'll look at putting things together and see what it looks like. I've just put the first um, side of the tracks together and, well, I've left out the idlers here because that would make it a bit tighter than it is right now and there are already problems at this tightness, uh, as we see if I turn this around. So, if we look at that screw there, it's being pulled down by this wheel. All right, so putting a bolt in there is not really gonna help, it's just gonna pull down the plastic then. So what I'm going to do here is, thankfully these spaces that I put in here um, will then allow me to put in a kind of a, a U or omega shaped loop around the, the, the bolt, uh, which will he keep it down in place there while, while it's being pulled up by the, uh, by the, the track. Turns out the track is well fitting, so that could actually work out very well. Got these uh, little omega shaped things, and uh, I can probably fit them in there. It's just a matter of squeezing. Hope I got the dimensions right. Squish. There we go. So that just goes down there, and then I can just uh, see. That just goes down. Where is my camera? It's on this side, right? I was just just poking at the end there. Right, uh, now to put in the final one there, what I'm first going to do is put those little idlers on, uh, just over these things here. One there. That's pretty loose. And another one on the far side. I we should just print them again. They're very, very loose. Well, I suppose that's the point they they're idle. Now, so the final wheel goes in there. So to do that, I'm just going to separate the, the wheels slightly like that. So I can put, set, separate the wheel. So the bottom wheel goes under first, and then I can start treading it on. And as it tightens to the point where I need it to, I can just move that tread up. Right, now I can test it with a battery. Let's test this now. So, battery here, and let's put the hold here. Ah, 
and we've got a moving track. Moving track. Not very fast, obviously, but uh, oops, it's caught there. There we go. Now, so I wonder why did that happen and how do I stop it? So after uh, sticking on one side, I've noticed uh, another issue. The the motor is very, very slightly wider than what I'd predicted. This is not the same motor as uh, I have in my previous robot. It's a slightly, slightly wider one, um, but it's just very slightly wider than what I predicted, and that's caused a little bit of pressure on this side. You can see this angle here. Um, I have no way of actually pulling that in from the top, so I think I need to redesign this uh, this top piece so it has a screw part that I can screw this into to tighten it up against it, and possibly either expand this middle part again or build a small spacer to allow it to to just expand as the, the motor need as the motor needs it. All right, so you can see the problems now that this thing is sticking up over the edge and this bit here is sticking up over the edge uh, instead of redesigning this entire thing just to make one millimeter or two millimeters space I'm just going to shave these off uh, I think this plastic here is probably not completely necessary and I can always build something else that will keep that motor in if that's what the problem is so I'm just going to remove this and see what happens either to fall apart or it won't So I've um, I've grinded ground grounded green. I've grinded these uh, this bit down. Uh, I cut off the plastic that was there. I've got these things. I don't know what they are. They're probably capacitors of some sort. Uh, I had to resolder them so that they wouldn't. They were they were kind of looped around the top. I had to resolder them so that they are actually looped uh, downwards. But you can see that's really really nicely flat now. So that should fit in now with no effort. Much better. So um, that's a much better tolerance. Uh, I had to remove these little uh, th this clip that I had here and here because that was too tight against these wheels. But um, oh, that's pretty cool. It's looking good now. <laughs> I think the wheels are still a bit too tight, but uh, getting there. All right. So I have boat legs. They're not legs anymore. There, I have boat tracks on. Uh, I have no idea if it's going to work, so what I'm going to do now is uh, program this, which will take me about 30 minutes. Um, I'll just basically copy what I did on the other machine uh, onto this machine and just press run. Okay, I have the track on, I have the thing programmed, and I've tested it once and the other track came off because it's so tight and there's no give at all, so uh, it just finds its whatever way it can get off. But the programming does work. If I tell this to go forward, well, you can see that the wheel is moving. It's not really doing anything though because it's trying to get off as well. There, well you can see what's happening here. The track is finding whatever route it can to get off. So, I need to find a way of keeping it on. And I think a way to do it is to change these idlers so they're not solidly there, but they're actually kind of springy. They spring upwards, uh, but they also try and keep the track in place. I'll work on that tomorrow. It's uh, Wednesday after work time, and uh, I'm just looking at my... I've, I've got these prints done, and um, I was going to set it up that I could adjust... Um, a, a, a wheel here and push it in just to progressively make that stronger but instead uh, what I decided was to redesign uh, the connection onto it so that we have now uh, the gear and uh, the, the toothed gear here which pulls the belt but um, let's see this piece of belt there uh, but instead of it's tricky to get in um, Right, and now it's going to be held tightly, that is pretty tight, uh, against another wheel next to it, which turns, if you look closely, you can see there's a gear on the top of both of these, so that when this turns, that turns as well. So that keeps the belt tight, 
uh, means that when this turns it should definitely pull the belt through or in either direction. Uh, which also means that I can now do it with the teeth down if I want, or I could do it with the teeth up. So I'm going to choose it with the teeth down because that solves another issue that was pointed out to me um, before it becomes an issue. So I'm going to put this on to here now and see if it works out. I've got um, the belt on on one side, and I still have the old belt on the other side, and now we, be we can see what the difference is. So um, the major differences are, that's very loose. Uh, it doesn't have to be that loose, it's just the way the belt is at the moment. I can make, I can make the belt a bit tighter and tighten that up. Uh, and I have the treads now on the inside, uh, which means the dirt that's caught on the bottom here will not uh, get caught around the, the gear here. Now, you can see here, I've got these two wheels right next to each other, toothed gears. Uh, force them to, to turn uh, opposite each other, which will force the, the, the belt through or through one way or the other. If we turn back to the other side, uh, I've got the teeth on the outside because of how the wheel here works. So we needed the, the teeth on the outside so that here the teeth go around the actual gear itself. And uh, in order for this to work, this needs to be tight. So that's actually very, it's, it's, well, it's quite tight. Um, now, let's give it a shot. So I'll take it forward. You can see the belt going. Now you can see that it's loose. You can actually see it kind of bouncing around there. And we'll go back. So the only worry I have now is that, uh, is that it might be so loose that the track comes off. Um, but I can fix that in a number of different ways. Uh, first obvious way is that I can make the track a little bit more um, uh, tight. So just uh, make a, a tighter track. I, I might have a, a few of the, the, the bad bind bindings that I did earlier on. I might use them. Um, the other side here, if I just hit forward. Oh, what's that? Yep, it's after coming off there on the tight side. And the problem with the tight side is that it's so tight that it's, it's quite difficult to get that belt back on. Sometimes. I've got it on there now. Um, but on the other side, it's not difficult at all. Okay, so I'm going to do this side and then tighten this belt up a little by just um, uh, recutting it. I'll just remove one or two teeth. Now that I've got this on, um, I, I just realized there's an easier way of tightening the belt, which is just to put a little wheel right there. So if I put a wheel in there just pushing down, um, just clipping onto the top here, which is a small small idler. Uh, it also has the added advantage that it adds, it, it forces the belt to put more teeth on it there. I have the, the idlers on now, tension idler, and it basically just, uh, it, it adds tension, yeah. So it's, it's not a lot of tension, I mean if, if with some effort I can I can still take the track off. Uh, but hopefully it's enough tension to stop it from naturally coming off. Now, one thing I noticed when I was testing this out, if I click on, now this is the back of the robot. If I click on forward, then it's actually going backwards. Um, I'll just show you. Okay. This is the back. I click on forwards, it goes backwards. If I click on right, so I'd expect it to turn that way, it turns left. Now the reason for that is that in the previous version of the robot I had the track going over the top, uh, the, the bottom of the, the drive wheel, but now I have it over the top so it's actually it's being reversed. Uh, which is fine because, uh, because I have this completely symmetric at the top, I can just say that this is now the front. So yeah, it's got a little toggle switch at the front, but I can always move that to the back if I need to. Or I could just reverse the um, the motors, but I, I don't really care. You know, uh, forward, back, it doesn't really matter. So now, it does matter. If I turn right, I want it to turn right. So I have to reverse the motors. Uh, that's fine, I can do that.
Okay, so that's the um, that's this video done. Uh, I've got a working robot. I am going to reverse those motors and make it work the right in the right direction, but that really there's, there's nothing more to say on this. Uh, it, it's a good robot. So the next stage, I don't know what the next stage is, but we'll find out in the next video.